Hello everybody. Today I'll be giving you guys a really quick introduction to PIC. So all PIC really is is just a GROF or TROF preprocessor. And all a preprocessor is, is it basically just formats things that GROF or TROF can read it and transition it into whatever format we would like. So you can use PIC in like a man page, you can use PIC in a terminal, you can use it to PIC in just like a straight X buffer, you can use it in a PDF. You can use it for anything that you can use TROF or GROF for. Um, PIC also can be used with tech. I haven't actually tried this before, but supposedly you can do it. For the most part, this will be focusing on um, the original Unix implementation of PIC, even though I'll be using uh, the GNU implementation of PIC. Everything I say in this video should apply to Unix PIC. So first off, when you guys create a file and you plan to use PIC with GROF or TROF, what you're going to do is you're going to make a .ps to start and a .pe to end. And then everything that would go in your graph file or trough file would go on the outer outside of that. So in PIC you have different shapes. So we're just going to show you guys some of them. So you have a circle, uh, ellipses, and a box. Alright, those are all the base shapes. And then you have also uh, different kinds of lines. You have a line, an arrow, and a spline. On top of that you also have an arc. So now that you guys know the base shapes, I'm just going to show you guys how you can view them. So what you're going to do is you're going to run the following commands. You're going to go pick the file, you're going to pipe that into whatever version of GROF or TROF you're using. In this case, I'm using GROF, so I'm going to go GROF. And then my output format if I'm using GROF. And then we're just going to put that in test.pdf. And I'm just going to open test.pdf. And There we go. So now we can see all of our shapes. So we've got our circle, our ellipses, our box, our line, our arrow, and our spline, and then our arc. All right. So by default, graph or pick will just place everything we write out side by side by side. So if I do, so if we've got our circle and our lines and everything, we can actually add text to them. So let's go into the first thing, which is text. We're gonna go circle. So as you guys can see, all the text is put in the middle besides the arc. It is in the arc it is put in the center of wherever we're arcing through. So something you guys will notice really quick is that pick does not actually adjust for more text. So, so as you can see, our circle is here, goes outside of our circle. So we'll have to change our sizing if we want to make the text fit. What you can do to um, add extra lines is you can add another set of quotes new line new line will go below it and we can just keep adding lines if we need to and it will keep going below but as you can see it will still keep going outside of our circle so to expand our circle we can use uh, basically a parameter telling us what size we want so I'm going to go rad for radians and then we're going to give it a radius of 1 and that will enlarge our circle. For ellipses, you can use ht for height. You can also type the height out. ht is just shorthand. Width for width. And we're going to give it a height of 1, the width of 1. Um, and same goes for the box. So we can height of 1, width. All right. And That'll be it for these guys. We'll come back to we'll come back to the other stuff in a sec. So, so now that we've got basically our text and our dimensions, we can also add um, a location. So I'm going to do at, and then you can give it just a specific location. So I'm going to do negative one, comma zero. Actually, let's go. And then you can give this at, uh, let's give this zero, comma, zero. All 
All right, and so as you guys can see, we just use at and then a location. And the location can be a bunch of different things, but here I'm just using a xy location. So this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. So as you guys can see, we can't see our circle anymore. Or sorry, we can't see our box anymore. And the reason for this is because we're going off our page. So to fix that, we can actually scale this. So we're gonna scale this to three. And there we go, we've scaled our text for pick. There we go. And so now we can see this guy. There we go. And so now we can see that they are all been put at their own location. So this is at a negative four points to the left, zero, so centered, and then four points to the right for the box. So now we can use our lines and arrows to connect them. So we're gonna go line from last, so meaning the last one that we called box. So this is going from the last box to, actually let's go ellipses to box. Um, I just move this around to make our arrows actually have a bit more meaning. And so last ellipses to box. And then we can also do an arrow and an arc. And so now we can have our arrow right here and an arc going from one to the other. Something worth mentioning right now is that a hashtag is what you use as a, um, basically a comment, right? And so, so basically we can give it a start and an end. So the reason I use last is basically because it's the last one we called. So now say if I have two boxes, and let's put them a bit further. So we put a box down here, and so this counts as our last box. Now how can I make this ellipses go to that box? Well, what you do is you just use second. Just tell it to go to the second box. And we can even draw from box to box by doing last box to second last box. Bam, all right, and then we can do third. Oh yeah, we don't have a third box, but. And there we go, now we get boxes going from each box. So that's pretty useful. Something I wanna go over really quick is creating new objects. And so to do this, we're just gonna go A colon and then our definition. So we're just gonna make this box right here called A. All right, and you'll notice that it prints it out, but actually this box now is named A. So we wanna do from this, so we can do last box, actually let's call this. And so now uh, this box is named B and this box is named A. So now we can do arc from instead of last box, we can do A, B. That's a lot more concise and now we have labels. So this can be really useful. You can even do something, you can even use numbers. So box one, your uh, names have to be capitalized though, geez. And so now I'm sure you guys can see that we go from bot, from object B to object and then box one. So now one last thing I wanna cover is um, locations on an object. So for example, we have all these boxes and say we see our arrow and it's kind of going inside of these boxes. And we wanna have it on the outside most likely. So what you can do is you can do, so instead of doing box up. So instead of doing B, we're gonna do dot west. And you'll see that that moves to the west side of the box. And then we're gonna do dot west, and that moves there. You can also do northwest, and that will put it up there. And same with southwest, I'll put it down there. All right, so you, I'm sure you guys can see a lot of use in this. Um, Everything that's created as an object is all counted as the same surface, the same area. So 
I'm sure you could see a lot of use in that as well. Now this can apply to all locations. So say instead of doing at this location, let's do last box dot north. And now this is put at the north side, of the center of this box is put at the north of the other box. I usually like to use coordinates, but there's a lot of other ways to move things around. Um, there's also ifs, there's for loops, there's a lot of different ways that you can work with this. But for now, that should be enough to get you guys started. Thanks for watching this video. Please let me know if there's anything you want me to cover in the future. If you learned something, feel free to give a like, throw a comment down below, uh, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next time.